was, as he said, the, uh, <laughs> the announcement of the... Uh, Got, yeah, you, let's, let's get this done in five minutes and then we've got longer at the pub. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that anything like that for the uh, six thousand behind the bar will be gone within twenty seconds. So, I think no, I think it lasted about an hour last year. I think that's it. heckling. <laughs> Like, that's what I really need to do. 
hear me? Excellent. Right, this is learning front-end development as a back-ender. I'm Dave. Uh, I go by C for Thorny just about everywhere. Um, so I'm going to talk today a little bit about the purpose of this talk. I'm also going to tell you what I'm not going to be covering because I have to squeeze everything in to sort of half an hour, three quarters of an hour. Um, I'm going to talk about how my journey started. You know, th this is an ongoing process. Uh, toolkit that I've happened to choose. Uh, I'm going to give some honourable mentions for stuff I haven't used or did, chose not to use. Um, and look to the future and where we can go from here because I see this very much as a process and I want to try and help the community to become more, more in sync with each other. So we have the back-enders helping the front-enders with various bits and pieces on D.OQs uh, and vice versa. Um, th this, this slide comes with a health warning. Um, if I cough and turn the color of Ribena, I'm probably all right as long as I'm still vaguely upright. Um, anyone who's been in any of the talks I have been today will know exactly what I mean. <coughs> so, the purpose of this talk is to help back-end developers start their journey towards being more full-stack. Um, you know, the, the, the idea that these days you are a back-end developer or a front-end developer or a full-stack, I think everyone needs a little bit of everything these days. and. I know that I've described myself as three-quarter stack for many years because I'm not that great at the front-end stuff. Um, and I want to start a conversation, as I've said, about how back-enders can help front-enders and vice versa. And I'm looking to do a boff tomorrow to try and continue the conversation as well. <coughs> um, so what I'm not covering, well, I'm hoping everyone here knows what CSS, JavaScript, and HTML at least are. Um, I'm not really going to cover Twig in any great depth. I'm not really going to cover things like atomic design um, in, in, in any real depth. This is a 10,000-foot overview, as it were. Um, I'm not going to include details on how to set up or use Pattern Lab. Spoiler, that's the chosen toolkit. Um, this is about overview only. I am, however, hoping to post blogs and video uh, tutorials as and when I get to uh, bu building stuff with my own site. Uh, I'm also mostly talking about Drupal 8 here. Um, the differences between Drupal 8 and Drupal 7 mean that although you can use Pattern Lab with Drupal 7, it's not as easy. Um, Google is your friend if you wish to look up that. So how my journey just started, I, have a, I had a desire to be a more rounded developer outside of London and the home counties. Most roles wanted full stack developers rather than specifically uh, back-enders, and I don't want to do the London thing every day. So basically, it was partly for, for better job opportunities. Um, so I then started looking into tools, techniques, um, relearning JavaScript, brushing up on my CSS, um, and e even to a certain degree my HTML, um, so as uh, to, to sort of make sure this is, this is what I wanted. Um, I then started watching a lot of front-end inspired talks, um, particularly Mark Conro Conroy's uh, Pattern Lab stuff, um, but also uh, quite a lot of the talks that uh, came out at sort of Drupal Camp Dublin, etc. Um, you know, they're, they're, they were a big source of inspiration for me in terms of both choosing Pattern Lab, but also going down that idea of this is what I want to do. This, you know, I like the idea behind atomic design, etc. Um, as I say, I eventually chose Pattern Lab, um, mostly because I liked the idea of, of atomic design. To me. Its flow is more similar to a, a back-end orientated way of thinking in that we have atoms which become molecules, 
which become organisms which generate templates and pages. Backend development, lines of code, functions, classes, which might be interfaces, they might be, um, you know, through, through inheritance, we might have superclasses, etc. So the, the ideas are similar, at least to my way of thinking. Uh, <coughs> so that, that, was, that was one of the reasons that I particularly liked atomic design. And as I've just explained, it was, there were similarities in, in how I developed, how I break things down matches the, the atomic design way of doing it and Pattern Lab was was the first thing I discovered, the first thing I looked at and, and I happened to really, really like it. Um, and my choice of uh, toolkit had nothing to do with the fact that I work with Anatac. Um, it just so happens that, that Anatac use a lot of Pattern Lab and it, it kind of works in a synergy with, with, with what I was looking for. It, it is genuine coincidence. So, Pattern Lab 101, as I say, this is a 10,000 foot overview. So, it's atomic design. The idea that everything is broken down to the smallest possible layer, and then you build up towards having full web pages. So, you've got your atoms, which might be your fonts, or your, your base elements. You then go to your organisms, which might be a div. You, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You go through. Um, you know, you go through to sort of templates, which might be a header section. Uh, and obviously, templates make up pages. Uh, <coughs> so I also quite like the fact that you've got a, a live automatic style guide. You're building. You build Pattern Lab, in there is an automatic style guide which allows you to, A, demonstrate to the client exactly what their design is going to look like. You can present it as a website. They are able to see it exactly as it is, so we don't have issues surrounding, well, it was 16.25 pixel font in Photoshop, and we can't easily do that on the web, and a pixel is a different size on a Mac to Windows, let alone browser differences. Um, this way, you have the ability to be able to say, right, this is what you're going to see. So my boss who sat there on a 2010 MacBook will see it exactly the same as my grandfather who's using a Windows XP machine and IE 7. Um, you know, they, they will see what they see, and there will be consistency in that. Again, this is something that I like. It's consistency. It helps relate to back-end techniques and tools that I've been using all my life, and makes, it makes my life easier to, to adjust towards being a front-end developer. And as I've mentioned, it's the back-end mentality surrounding it. Um, <coughs> so, Pattern Lab is heavy on buzzword backend JavaScript tools. You've got your NPMs, you've got your gulps, you've got your yarns, etc. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what each of those are, but what I found when I was going away and learning all of these was actually if I related them to backend equivalents, then they made a lot more sense to me. NPM, if you consider it to be similar to Composer in that it's a package manager, uh, that for me worked. I could then completely understand how NPM worked and deal with the fact that, you know, node modules brings in 50 million files. Gulp was task runner. Great. As, as a back-end developer, I completely understand that look at things like Fing, uh, if you go back far enough, or using other language tools such as Ant, Maven for building objects, running tasks, etc. And Yarn is very much um, Composer with Prestissimo installed. It's, it's, it's NPM on steroids, basically. Um, there is a requirement for the Drupal module components to be used because we need namespacing within Twig. 
um, this, is, this is the core functionality about how both Atomic Design and Pattern Lab work. Great, another back-end thing. I'm able to understand this. I'm able to relate to this, um, particularly now with, with Drupal 8 using more modern object-orientated approaches. We're seeing similar things start to come through with front-end techniques. <coughs> um, particle, which is one of the base themes that Pattern Lab, or Phase 2, who created Pattern Lab, came up with. I, I actually found it quite tricky to set up. So I'm, I am going to make sure that I blog and uh, release a video series about this. <coughs> because, for starters, the theme, base theme is called Particle, but the directory it's in and the file names are Pattern Lab. So you have pattern.lab.info.yaml. Um, my advice to people who are wanting to look into this and look into Pattern Lab further, leave the theme name as Pattern Lab to begin with. Otherwise, you are going to have a couple of hours debugging, trying to find which reference is looking for patternlab.info.yaml, which you, of course, renamed David Thorne theme or whatever. Um, unused alternatives. So I looked at all of these in some detail um, and chose not to use them. So why did I not use Bootstrap? Well, partly because it's Bootstrap. It, it is very much a bit of a Marmite framework. Um, but I also found it <laughs> sites that are, that are built in Bootstrap. I, I tend to find have a visual, you know, visual smell. You know, it's Bootstrap, um, and I appreciate that slightly oxymoronic uh, with 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 a visual smell. But you can see that it's Bootstrap, and I didn't want to just be another Bootstrap person. I wanted, I looked at it, took the techniques, loved the idea of, you know, a very simple grid system, great, and I can completely see why a lot of people, particularly using sort of rapid application um, development tools and techniques, love it. But I personally thought, this isn't for me. I had some difficulty trying to get menus to work nicely with it within Drupal. Um, I never did work out if that was me, the Bootstrap base theme, Bootstrap itself, or Drupal. Um, probably somewhere between the lot. But I, I basically decided that the Bootstrap wasn't for me. Zerp Foundation, which is a rival, if you like, framework. Um, <coughs> it's, I found that to be very front-end heavy. Um, which is great if you're a front-end developer, but again, I'm trying to learn these techniques for the first time. I worked with it quite extensively at one of the previous companies I've worked with <coughs> because that was what they had decided was the right framework for them. Um, so I, I had access to people who, who knew it and understood it well. And there are bits that I really, really like. Uh, for instance, they have some lovely JavaScript extension stuff that will allow you to do better client-side um, validation. Um, but Zerb Foundation is also nice in that it is a component-based framework, so you can pull bits of it in without needing to pull the whole thing in. Um, so I've taken the bits that I like, and I will use the, those such as it's um, you know da data binding properties for for validation, and I'll leave the rest for now. Um, KSS Node, okay, that is more of a style guide building tool than necessarily a CSS framework and such. I started to look into this at the same sort of time as I discovered Pattern Lab, and ended up going down the Pattern Lab route because everything fell together nicely for me. Um, so I've not hugely looked at KSS Node. I like the idea behind it. I will probably look at it again at some point. Um, but the idea of 
when I'm starting out having to maintain something separate to give me my style guide and then import everything in through Drupal. Um, did, didn't sit well with me. I want something as simple as possible for the first few times that I'm, I'm doing this. Uh, therefore, KSS node was, was, was pushed to the wayside for now. Um, why didn't I use Omega, Zen, or any other popular uh, Drupal parent themes? Partly because I fell out with Omega when sort of they went back from the Omega 4 to, to Omega 5 and they went away, they took a step away from being more back end orientated. Um, I wasn't after something that was pointy and clicky. Um, I've not looked at Omega on Drupal 8, I will be honest. Um, and I know Omega 5 has been out on 7 for, for a long time now. They may even be at 6. Um, <clears throat> but it just, it was, again, it was front enders, it was site builders. It wasn't quite what I was after. I'm trying to be more of a full stack developer. I don't necessarily want to be reliant on point and click. Um, although point and click is a very useful teaching tool. Zen, I, I got fed up with so much Ruby. Um, okay, again, Zen's moved on. I've not looked at it for eight, but as far as I'm aware, Zen Grids is still a Ruby gem. I'd still need to work with Ruby tools and techniques. I don't necessarily want to have to throw in and install Ruby on my machine just to be able to compile all my code. It should be able to be everything I need to run is already on there. I've got my PHP, I've got my JavaScript. I shouldn't have to look at installing Ruby in gems, etc., uh, to be able to, to, to deal with that. So, where, where can we go from here? How can I continue developing my skills further? How can I help you develop your skills further as, as back-end developers um, as, and, and uh, you know, as you move towards looking to, boy, to be sort of full stack? Let's have a discussion about it. You know, let, let's, let's do it as a boff. Um, as I say, I'm hoping to be able to organise one tomorrow. Failing that, we can talk down the pub um, when, uh, when we go to the after party. But for me, the next steps are I need to continue the process that I've started. So I need to continue researching. I need to look at exactly how Pattern Lab can assist me further. What from, you know, what the what front-end techniques do I still need to, to look at to be able to, uh, to be able to become that more full-stack developer? You know, do I need to brush up on my JavaScript? Definitely. Do I need to learn React? Probably not, uh, or not yet at any rate. Um, so for me, it's very much a continuation of the process I've started, the research, the, the iteration, and treating, treating my, my front-end development very much as I would back-end development. It's just more visual. Um, it's, it's the, the, the iterations are more obvious than they might be with back-end development where we're potentially looking at efficiency, we're potentially looking at getting the right data. Um, I'd also like to push towards back-enders helping in the Drupal.org issue queues. It's something I'm trying to do as and when I have the time. Um, you know, because time and time again, I see both on internal slacks and in Drupal Slack in IRC, a front-end developer saying, can a back-ender have a look at this, please? I don't completely understand it. 99% of the time, someone does step up, but it seems that it's something that doesn't happen often enough. There is too much time between that request for help. It might be a couple of days before a backender, um, you know, sort of get, gets in and helps with, with certain bits and pieces. And depending on time zones, particularly with something like Drupal, you know, that, that can be a very, very long time. Um, <clears throat> so I want to push for 
back end is helping the, the front end colleagues more. I also want to see the reverse. I want to see front end colleagues helping back end people more, helping with things like the accessibility side of it. You know, we, we have our part to play in making sure things display correctly. You know, you've got the right data, it's as accessible as possible. Front end is very good at getting the data to look right. Let them help us, let us give them the best chance by getting them the right data in an, as, as an accessible way as possible. So, some contact details. Um, as I say, I'm C for Thorny on just about everything. Um, I hang around in, in IRC, uh, Slack from time to time. Um, I do respond as time allows. Um, and I'd be a bit remiss uh, given my boss couldn't get over because of the, uh, because of the snow. Um, I'm a tech hiring support engineer. Come work with me, come work with other great front end people like Mark Conroy. Uh, who's been doing an awful lot with the Out of the Box initiative. Um, sports engineers at Anatech do get to work on exciting projects, but also they do get to deal with working with building new features. This isn't a support engineer is not just standard support tickets. Um, so Q and A, and then the pub. So, do people have any questions? Yeah, I've not looked in any way, shape, or form at Angular, so um, probably not. Um, there is limited support for React. Um, I believe they're working on better support. Uh, the version 10 of Pattern Lab, which is currently in, I'd say, early beta, because um, it's about beta 2, beta 3, when I checked a few days ago, um, is very much at the moment a ja much more JavaScript orientated and looks like it's going to work better with things like React. Um, so it looks like they're working towards better support for that. Um, Pattern Lab, I believe, can work with other templating languages as well. I don't think it is limited to Twig. Um, I've not seen anybody using it with things like Smarty, which is another templating language, but my understanding is it can be used with that. Any other questions? So I've used the particle starting kit, um, which is uh, near enough as plug as play as you're going to get with, with Pattern Lab and Drupal. Um, basically, for, for it's a case of download it, npm run, build Drupal or, or Drupal build, something like that, and it will run off, run NPM, get your 50 million warnings, um, and it's then near enough ready to go, uh, particularly if you don't rename it. Um, in terms of where do we start from, well, actually, how much attention do we have to pay to warnings of deprecation, etc. cetera, um, on, on NPM? <sighs> yeah, I basically learned to ignore those warnings um, because it seems that 
NPM iterates at such a rate and deprecates so much so quickly uh, compared with certainly what I would see as a, a life cycle within back-end development that a warning of deprecation is it's, it's as common as anything. Um, in terms of what can be done about that, I'm not a strong enough JavaScript developer to be able to go away and sort of say, right, this is actually what it now needs to do, and don't file a patch with relevant module maintainer for that particular NPM uh, package. But yeah, if, if you are developing your JavaScript skills um, and have the confidence to go and do that, then, then let, let's help others, let's contribute fixes that say, well, actually, I don't know, index of has been deprecated. We now need to use index for or, or, or something. Um, so go, go away and, and help the module maintainers start to move towards that. Um, in terms of how you can improve your JavaScript or you know, getting, getting used to the huge changes in JavaScript that are happening, uh, I've used Wes Boss's uh, JavaScript 30 course, which is 30 uh, roughly 20-minute episodes uh, that, that's freely available uh, online. Um, and everything there is uh, JavaScript or ECMAScript 2015. Um, JavaScript and ECMAScript are mostly the same. Um, I think what traditionally we would know as JavaScript was ECMAScript 6, and they've, ne they've now gone to a, a yearly. So you get ECMAScript 2015, ECMAScript 2016, etc. cetera. Um, it's pure JavaScript rather than React or jQuery. Um, so I, I found that very useful for brushing up on my um, JavaScript. In terms of CSS, I, I, I treated that very much as I would learning a language. Um, you know, I just went away, okay, how do I do this? What is a transition? Uh, what is a class? Um, you know, do I, do I want to look at using things like SAS less? Um, or do I want to just write raw CSS? Um, and uh, again, I kind of went down the, well, actually, everything seems to use SAS, so I will use SAS um, root. HTML, we write enough of that that I didn't have to, have to worry too much about additional stuff there. So there's, there's plenty of resources online. Um, and yeah, I, I found Wes Boss's stuff from the JavaScript side to be top notch. He's got some very good free stuff, some very good paid for stuff as well. Any other questions? Okay, well, in that case, I think we'll head to the pub early. Yeah. The drinks are in the uh, the brick makers and toffee uh, toffee maker and brick toffee toffee maker blacksmith, blacksmith and toffee, toffee makers, makers, which is around the back of the uh, university. And uh, there's a tab behind the bar sponsored by Thunder. Thank you. I, I really like it. I've been doing it. a lot. I've been. I, mean, I, mean, I, 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 I am very much a back end developer. I'm not a back end developer. But you have your tips and strategies every now and then. So why do you buy from Thunder? Because you can use their tips and strategies. You've got to remember that tips and strategies are about the most important thing in any development process. And then when it fails, you bring in the tips. So I think what you need is you need to have a tip. I don't know. I, I, what really impressed me was the thinking, and in fact, as you see, the aesthetics were very good. They it wasn't even responsive, though. It's responsive, but I had a look. Bloody hell, it's good. But it took me shit loads of CSS yeah. or SAS to read it. Ho hopefully, that will help you through PC. Um, actually, I've got a problem with that. I don't know if you've got a problem with that. Oh, 
husband, I have to make a stand and and I need my <laughs> my first daughter in tow because uh, because most of the rest of them have been like with the clan and lived out free of it, but show up on a regular basis. <coughs> that was the one I was using. So that's cool. 